Elon Musk almost sold Tesla to Google for $11 billion. But he called the deal off when he no longer needed a savior after sales surged. Now this is an interesting, this is an interesting one here. Because basically what it boils down to, in my opinion, is the thoughts and decisions and actions or possible actions that people may take when they need money. Maybe certain things that choices and decisions actions that they might ultimately regret hindsight's always 2020 right as i sit out here and you're wondering what the hell is he doing i'm just chilling because michelle was recording her video and i was giving her some time to do that and giving myself some time to think and uh enjoy my solitude out here in my own private pool technically private pool today because i'm the only one out here um that's not this is going to be short-lived once this weather really really warms up which it's not cold enough to really need this beanie i just have it on um this place is going to be packed this place will be packed and uh we'll have to get here early to get our seat in the cabana uh it's going to be lit looking forward to spring 2024 summer 2024 don't even know what our plans are this year in regard to travel but uh yeah we just take it one day at a time we play it by ear but uh yeah how many folks how many of you guys have ever needed money and thought to yourself maybe you'll sell something to get money to get you over the hump you know solve that problem get you out of a bind get you out of a jam how many? Because with the way things are going, uh, you would think that that would be the, the norm, you know? I watched Michael Bordenero the other day, briefly. He can only take small doses. And uh, essentially he was saying that no, uh, nobody makes enough money to buy a house or rent because in order to be approved and qualify, you'd have to make uh, $10,000 a month, $120,000 a year, and basically nobody can do that. Or at least that's the stats that he pulled from whatever article he was reading at the time, be that as it may, uh, the general consensus from many uh, on YouTube is that money's tight and people are broke. Now, oddly enough, I rarely come across these instances and stories and conversation in real world, just everyday talk. And also, I'm not a huge Ram fan, but this black 3500 is really kind of like got my attention. I don't need another diesel. But money, money's tight, money's a problem. We got bills to pay. We got things to buy, we got wants, we got needs. And uh, in respect and regard to YouTube, um, this can potentially create a very, very problematic situation in terms of content, content creation, curation, strategy, Somebody actually commented and asked, and I think it was De Denise or D-Nice, and it was Kevin, basically, what is the difference between a, what is a low effort niche? And uh, I don't have the comment pulled up in front of me, but basically it was, is it low effort in what it takes you to create it? Or is it low effort in what it takes the viewer to understand and watch it? And that's very interesting because I never thought about it that way. I was presenting it from the standpoint and perspective of very simple and easy to make. So um, low effort creation would be, for instance, uh, I've seen channels where they literally walk. They don't talk, they just walk. 
they walk cities, they walk beaches, they walk different places, and they just got a camera on them. And that's it. Just taking you on a tour, basically. Non-verbal. We've also got, I've seen a channel, where it's literally just an upload of a ring camera or ring camera footage of bears that make trips and visits to their front porch. Another of a GoPro inside of a bird feeder or some sort of house where birds are laying eggs and they're hatching. I mean, this is pretty low effort. Literally, you just press record and that's pretty much it. Now, there's other forms of low effort, but I think you guys get, get the picture, get the point. Now, in regard to low effort to watch, well, I think those are fall into that same category. Uh, but also maybe Mr. Beast's content might be low effort to watch, maybe. Because it's purely designed to stimulate and entertain at the highest level. Although, because of so much of that stimulation, it could actually create the opposite effect and make it uh, very, very overwhelming to consume and a daunting task to sit through because of so much change and edit and flashing lights and captions and, you know, all the things that they claim, they say, they say these are what makes great YouTube videos. Yeah, okay. But let's just say from my perspective, from my niche, from the information I have available to me in my YouTube analytics and YouTube studio, well, I can see folks going the route of low effort in a niche that was originally, I believe, intended and designed to help, but now has been, mm, it's been, overused I guess it's been manipulated it's being miscategorized and is ultimately uh, just a, a cycle of repetitive nonsense and fiction for lack of better words to hijack views but the question is why well I think the answer is very simple and I think it's no different from the situation that Elon Musk was in he needed money he needed a financial savior of sorts and he found it in Google but turned down the deal because of a surge in sales now here's where things get real tricky. Here's where things can get really dangerous. Because from the perspective of a YouTuber, content creator, loose term here, when all you do is go around and basically try to copy and clone and rip off and rebrand and mimic and, you know, repeat what others are doing that are actually being creative, I don't consider that to be a content creator. I consider that to be a hack. I consider that to be tragic because you can create low effort content in a low effort niche authentically on your own without relying on writing anybody else's coattails. You can be inspired to model the after, but when your sole focus is on making money, then things kind of, kind of get a little bit hairy. People get a little desperate. They start doing things they wouldn't normally do, saying things they wouldn't normally say. And unfortunately with YouTube, if you hit that vein, if you find that financial savior, if you see a surge in views, virality, subscriber growth and ultimately revenue well then you're gonna turn down the deal from 
Google for $11 billion and say, I don't need it anymore. I'm good. I figured this out. But if you're doing that based on lies and falsehoods and just a bunch of nonsense, then you're going to have to continue to do it and keep up this facade and this charade to keep your audience on the hook or else you're going to find yourself in a financial bind again and you need money so you'll get desperate again and this is a trend that i see happening on the platform they glorify it they promote it they uh suggest it they recommend it but what are you gonna do what are you gonna do as a viewer that's a question as a creator as a youtuber that's another question and if as the creator what you're doing is inherently wrong and morally unjust and not working how long do you continue to beat your head against the wall for peanuts ultimately to be let down and disappointed and oh yeah still without money